Hey guys, welcome to History Byte. Have you guys ever thought about using triggers in PowerPoint to make things pop up on screen in the order you want in the moment rather than having it pre-designed? Well, hopefully today you'll find out. Normally when we use PowerPoint, things happen in a sequence and we animate that before we show it to our students. And so what happens is when every time I click, a one, a two, a three, a four, a fifth click. They all come up in order because they're pre-programmed. However, sometimes I want to respond to the needs of the students. And so I might have different things I want to bring up and I want to choose the order right then on the spot. And so I might choose to show number two first, number five first, uh, number three, number one, and number four in the order in which I suddenly decide I want to do it. This is what I'm going to show you to do because this wouldn't be possible without the use of triggers. So I'm going to show you how to do that using this page. If I escape out of there, let's bring up the animation pane from animations, animation pane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add animation. I'm going to add that one. I want that to split on and I want that one to split on. Now, the way that things currently feature, they will happen in that order. Each time I click, a different one will come up. But I don't want that. I want to add a, tr a trigger. So adding a trigger is quite simple. What you do is you first select the one you want from here and you right click on the trigger and you say timing. This brings up this little box. Now I want number one to show when I click show number one. So what I do is I come down to triggers and I say start effect on the click of and let's find that box that I want to trigger to. And there it is there, show number one, oval seven. So I click that. Now you'll notice here on the right hand side, it is now entered into a trigger section. So let's do the same to number two. Let's select number two. Let's right click on it and say timing. And again, I want number two to come up when I say show number two. So I come down to triggers. I say effect and I say show number two. There it is. There's the box. So I click that. So what happens now is rather than coming up in the order in which I added the animation, I can now choose the order by clicking on the trigger buttons. Equally so, if I want to change the order, I can now do it that way. You notice how they came up in a different order depending on how I clicked. Now, the same can be said of any animation, but also now I want to hide them as well. So what I can do is I can click on that one and I'm going to add a new animation. We're going to also make them disappear. And so what I can do is come down and add a new effect. I'm going to say dissolve out. And now you'll notice it's come up here. It's not part of the trigger. So now what we'll do is we'll add the animation go down to timing, come across, and we want the trigger to happen when we say hide number one. So let's go down to hide number one, there he is, and click. And we'll do the same for number two right away. Okay, so let's run that and see if this actually works. I can show number two, and then I can hide it. I can show number one and show number two, then hide one and hide two. So what I've done is I've created trigger buttons. This is quite a small scale, but suddenly it changes when you apply it to an educational context. Um, and, and this has real great impacts on things like starters and plenaries. Um, and so I'm gonna show you an example using our History Byte logo. Now I've got four boxes and I'm gonna have four questions in those boxes that I want students to be able to answer. When they get them correct, they will be able to reveal the next part of the picture. So let's cover up the picture. Now this I would do before class uh, and I would have the PowerPoint saved. The students do not know what the picture is. Now I'm going to, I've already done some of the animations, but again, I'm going to repeat this function. This time I'm not going to use a trigger button. If you noticed, what I want to happen here is that when a student gets it correct, I will click on the box they got correct for the question and that box will then disappear. So let's find out how to do that as well. So what I can do for question one, this box, I'm gonna do it in the normal way. I'm gonna get it to disappear. So let's add that animation. Let's get it to exit with dissolve out to reveal the picture underneath. I need to put the trigger on. So again, I come over to timing and I click on trigger, but this time there's no trigger button. The question itself is the trigger. So what I do is I come down and I want it to be the question one box. And when I click the question one box, the box disappears. There we go. So let's test this out. 
I've done the other ones to show you just to speed up time. Here are the questions and I pitch the questions to the class. Oh, student number one, he says, oh, I'd like to answer question four, please. So he answers it correctly. I click on question four, it disappears. The next student then says, oh, I'd like to answer question one, the one we just animated together. Gets it correct, I click on question one. This way, I can now choose the order in which they go off. The triggers have allowed me to reveal that image in the order I've chosen, rather than it being predestined uh, through the normal use of PowerPoint animation. Um, and when you when you get then get up to the next stage, you can then experiment with much bigger versions of the animation, uh, like I showed you at the beginning. And then you can have more questions on the screen and reveal bigger chunks. And, and what I tend to do with these is I tend to, where there's a part of the picture that will give it away sooner, I tend to put a harder question over the more key areas of the picture to reveal what it is. For example, these parts show that it's a coin. You can see the queen's face. However, if I was to just animate, if I was to make easy questions around the outsides, well, you might know it's a coin, but you might not know what's on the coin. And this one, you might not even have a clue what this is at this point. So the easier questions on the outside make the game last a bit longer. But doing this has lots of applications. I mean, you, at the moment, we're just hiding a picture in the background, but you can now also um, put text in the background. You can reveal chunks of text. Um, you can use it to um, bring up pieces of information. You can even have, say, for example, four boxes of information. And you could ask the students, right, what do you want to learn about first? And then you can reveal that bit of information. So it doesn't have to be predestined. Uh, you can choose on the spot how you want to respond to the students that you're teaching. So I hope that video was useful and I hope that I've explained it well enough. Uh, please leave comments if you'd like me to go over a certain bit again or, or, or give examples of a different part. Um, but uh, if you're happy with that, please just like it and don't forget to subscribe to History Bytes. Thank you very much.